morning, everyone. Welcome to meeting number 113 of the House of Commons Standing Committee on Government Operations and Estimates. The committee recommended by four to five parliamentary budget officers. Pursuant to Standing Order 81-4, the committee is meeting today to uh, consider items in main estimates 2024-2025. Uh, we Mr. welcome... Mr. Chair, point of, point of order, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, sir. We just started. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I have been a member of this uh, of this committee uh, for five years now, and I take pride in the work of this committee, uh, and I take a particular pride in the fact that uh, this is a committee that has traditionally been collaborative. What's your point of order, man? Together to get to the bottom of things and do the work that. Uh, constituents and residents and Canadians uh, uh, expect of us to do. Mr. We've always, Chair, worked, I, together. I, I, We've always I, worked together. I'm, let me get to my point, yes, please. You can get to the point of order, please. And every single, for the last five years, every single chair, and there's been multiple chairs chairing this, uh, this committee, has always sought instruction from committee members whenever an action was to be taken. And that is a bedrock principle Mr. of Chair, how this, this is committee not has conducted order. itself for five years. Point of order, Mr. Chair. Please, please allow please me to continue. Your, this is important. No, but please get your point of order, please, Mr. Kuzminchuk. I am. I am. Last week, a meeting was, call, was called without consultation and instruction of this committee. This week, we had two meetings scheduled without consultation or instruction or consent from this committee. A witness today was invited yesterday. We found out about this witness at 7 p.m. last night. There was no consultation, no instruction from this committee. And tomorrow we found out, actually we found out from Global News, that there may be another meeting tomorrow with additional witnesses. And again, no instruction, no consultation. And so I'm asking the, uh, the chair to explain to this committee, because this is completely out of tradition and the way we've operated in the last five years on this committee. This is something that Mr. is Mr. Chair, new. I've been very patient. And I have not heard any section or I'd any like valid to point ask of order. The chair, I'd like to ask the chair to explain how this meeting came about. I have a few questions for the chair, how this meeting okay. came about, what efforts were made by the chair to consult with members of this committee and seek instruction and a further question, why is this meeting being held today on a constituency week? Uh, and, uh, and why is this witness here uh, before us here today? And so this is a point of order. This is outside of the tradition of how this committee has conducted okay, gonna, itself over the last five your, years. I'm going to cut and you I'd off like there. I, I don't answer. think explain, that's a valid uh, point uh, of order. Explain his actions. Sure. Well, first of all, to start, it's not a valid point of order, but Thank I will you. answer your questions. Um, the premiers, representing 60, over 60% 60 of the population, wrote to the Chair of Finance to address uh, the issue of the increase of the carbon tax. The Liberal Chair, maybe under political uh, pressure from his own party, refused to. As the premiers are the highest uh, office holders in their provinces, representing millions and millions of Canadians, I thought we should respect um, the provinces and invite the premiers to participate in our study of the estimates which includes the government spending, including the carbon tax. Uh, there's lots of examples of other chairs doing such things. It is the privilege and obligation, I think, of the chair to call meetings, and I did so. I'm happy to go through some of the examples of other chairs from government-led parties doing the same, but it is within... Okay, uh, and like, what is uh, he complaining about? It's your job, and when meetings, it's a constituency yeah, week, you have the week off, and, and you're being called to, to a two-hour uh, meeting. meeting. That's all Mr. you have to Chair, do is again, two hours. Order, uh, a section 108 of the standing order clearly states that committee members instruct the chair on any action. And so I ask you again, what instruction, what consultation, even basic consultation, did the chair undertake uh, to schedule this week's meetings, including the meeting that, again, we hear yeah, is going to be scheduled sorry. for tomorrow. And, so and he's mad he's got to work to see, tomorrow for two hours as well when he was uh, getting the whole week off. From this committee. I think it's really important because this is a departure. Folks yeah. that are listening, I want them to know that this is a departure from the way we've conducted business at OGO Committee for five years. This is new. 
Yeah, it is within the powers and the prerogatives of the chair to call meetings, Mr. Kuzmierczuk. Um, our clerk is looking at the exact quote ruling, if you wish, but it is fully within the powers of the chair. For example, the Liberal um, Chair of Natural Resources called a meeting without anyone's knowledge in order to ram through the anti-Alberta, anti-energy industry um, point of order. C250. So oh, it has another been liberal point of order. Yeah, please let me finish, Ms. Altman. Um, it is fully within the powers of the chair to call such meetings, and I have. Go ahead, Ms. Altman. Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I think you're, you're taking a little bit of liberty there, um, insinuating that there's uh, some sort of liberal government with, with pushing our liberal chair and another committee not to, to have these meetings. I'm certainly they're, they're respecting the time and, and commitments of their committee members. It's not a point of order, Ms. Atwin. I, I'm getting there, actually, Mr. Chair. Oh, I would actually like to, to highlight your own, your own bias in making this decision. I'm noticing the stickers that have always been present as props in this committee. You love all, uh, pipelines and oil and gas, and it's very clear. And so perhaps that had a... a, a uh, a stake in this decision that she made doesn't today. like the Mr. stickers Chair, on his laptop. It's not Mr. a valid point of order. I do. So let me finish. Yeah. I, I do love oil and gas. If it bothers you, I will close my laptop. Mr. Druin and Mr. Lawrence, and then we're going to start the meeting. So I'm not a regular member of this committee, but I've been a, a member of this committee for six years. Never would Tom Mukiski, a good Saskatchewan MP, have done this. Never in his lifetime would he have done this. That's uh, not a point and of order, And the precedent Mr. that you are setting, Mr. Chair, Mr. is Duen, that not a I can tell order. you your that's side will be pissed of off with us because we'll call meetings at, at our, our disposal and that your is, side will not be happy with us. That is the chair's If that's prerogative. the way you want to set the precedence of this wow. committee, I'm telling you, we're going to challenge you. Okay. Wow. That is the chair's prerogative to call a meeting. If he wishes. They really don't want to work. <laughs> committee wishes Mr. To do Chair, so, if you're saying that no motions and no instructions from the chair must be uh, undertaken from now on, that is false. That is simply okay. false. I'm going to read to you and for Mr. Kuzmierczyk as well. Committee chairs have considerable administrative responsibilities, starting with those involving the committee's program of activities and compliance. With instructions from the committee or an order from the House, the chair calls committee meetings. So. Well, Mr. Chair, point of order, and I believe, exactly, I think you said it right there, and it bears repeating, it bears repeating, in compliance with instructions from the committee, in compliance with instructions from the committee, in compliance with instructions okay, we heard you from the, first time. the committee. Yeah, let me, Mr. Let Chair, me just you have address, neither sought, you let have me neither sought you on that, Mr. No consultation from this committee. Mr. Kasmirchuk, let me address that. And you have acted unilaterally, you have acted unilaterally outside the will Mr. of this committee. The that meeting, is the issue that I have with you, sir. The meeting. If you want to schedule meetings with witnesses, work with committee members. That's the way we've always done it. Past chairs have always Mr. respected Mr. that Kismir principle. Mr. Kasmirchuk, please and let that me is address the issue your that point I have of order. Today. Yeah. That is That's, the issue that I have with it, you today. If I could respond, I it's will address that. Sorry. We are meeting on the estimates, mm -hmm. the 2024-25 estimates, which the committee has agreed to. That is what our meeting is on today, and that is what I noted when I did my opening statement. Understanding Order 81 for the committee is meeting to commence the consideration of the main estimates 24 and, and why did you and schedule and this meeting I'm today on a constituency in. week? May I ask, Mr. Chair, so that okay. folks watching can know this? This is going to be the study the... on the main estimates. When is it due, Mr. Chair? When are when is the study, the committee study, Mr. on Kusmir the Chuck, estimates due? We are meeting on the estimates. I have the prerogative to call a yes. meeting on the estimates you... that the committee agreed to. We are now when going is it, to turn. When is it? When is it due, sir? That is regard. That is beside the point, Mr. Kuzmierczak. May thirty first. That's that's nice. May thirty first. That's fine. May We're that, now going to turn that's, things that's, over to. That's not that far, far away. You, you just. I just want to clarify to this committee. You've mentioned main estimates, and I'll remind that this committee is responsible for vote one under Canada Post Corporation, vote one under Canada School of Public Service. Vote one under Can Canadian Intergovernmental Conference Duen, Secretary. I'm, going to you, so I'm hoping that Premier Mo will a... be able to answer questions about Canada Post Corporations. Okay. I'm not sure he will be because that's not his responsibility. So again, we're, we're, we're asking for. I will quote once, and then we're going to get to. With the consent of committee, you did not get, get the consent to of committee, Mr. Mo. 
in the main estimates, CRA distribution of fuel charges. This committee is not responsible for CRA. billion going to 9.5, but it's the part of the main estimates, and we are studying the main estimates. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Chair, Duran, Mr. Chair I've been a long time member of this committee before my appearance here. I understand what this committee is responsible, and you're misleading committee. All the Liberals, they don't want to work. The Another Liberal right here. Damn well this, where it goes. Okay. You, you, you've been very... First of all, refrain from the language, Mr. Duan. Pardon my French. <laughs> okay, Mr. Chair, make, you've been very patient, but it, and I could recite numerous times that Peter Fonseca, Chair of the Finance, has adjourned and called without without instructions. I could I could rattle them off, Francis. So um, this is ridiculous. Let's move on. We've got the Premier Mo. I know that you guys don't want to talk about the carbon tax, and you don't want to hear from the people of Saskatchewan, but Canadians do. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Mo, our Premier Mo. We're going to turn. Mr. Mr. Chair, I have a I have a point of order. And, and, and this is going to be my last point of order, but it needs to be made. You call, the meeting, you call the meeting unilaterally without instruction or consultation with the members of this he committee. That is a fundamental bedrock to. principle. And furthermore, you called this meeting on the mains. The deadline to study this is May 31st. There is no reason to call this meeting during a constituency week when we literally have two and a half months to study domains. This is a political stunt and theater, which is part and parcel of what uh, of where the, our conservative colleagues are taking okay, this to get, get clips. Can you get to your point of order, please? Speak that of getting is my clips. point. Okay. That is my point, it's sir. A, you unilaterally called a meeting that was not necessary this week because you're... Just you know, due to work for two hours, man. After... Uh, and clips. shut up. Okay. And, like, uh, and again, I take you don't even have to ask questions for more uh, than like that. five minutes yeah, at a time. Other than that, you're just that. sitting there listening. Uh, but it's not a valid point of order. Ms. Vignola, then hopefully we can get to our honorable guests. Ms. Vignola, go ahead, please.